Hello and welcome to the 90 Minutes in Nick Lunch Club. As you can clearly see, I'm definitely not Christopher Gallagher. I'm Christian Wolf. I was told I was hosting this about six minutes ago, probably so I couldn't prepare any of my really clever starting jokes. Instead, we're going to start with another joke. Ian Dugan, how are you? That, that's very good, Christian. That's, that's right out the top drawer and your lack of preparation of that opening monologue then nobody will be able to tell. That's why they pay me the mini school yeah, box. Alan Edgar, it. how are you? It's been about 14 hours since you were on the Cynic podcast. What have you been doing? Sitting listening to it on repeat, time and time again, trying to improve every single element of my game. I'll give you a little uh, teaser. Alan is uh, obviously a, a regular on the Reaction podcast. He's, he's going to be so much of a regular. He might just host it sometime. He might just have it in his house. More of that Possibly. later. I think Whoa. it's about time the 90 Minute Cynic comes to the east end of Glasgow. Deposing Gal. Talking about the... He, oh, Gal's behind the camera. There's also somebody behind the camera, but if you're not talent on my... You know, really worth a mention. But yeah, Christopher Gallagher is behind the camera. Last time he was behind the camera, he was pretending he was sick. Oh, uh, yeah. Not at work. Don't say, so, no, say, don't say that. Don't repeat that. Don't say uh, that. So, some big news. We uh, announced to our... Well, to yourself, because you're listening to this, and you're a patron... For exclusive for our Patreon um, uh, subscribers, we sent out an email yesterday saying the first Cynic Live podcast is announced. You can buy tickets. 16 hours later, Ian Dugan, we're sold out. We're sold out. You know, a lot of people have said Christopher Gallagher's sold out. And uh, he, he literally and, has. And now he literally has. He's, I think, honestly, like, I just want to see his face. Let's just. Let's just do pillage gal for half an hour and see how long it takes him to jump in front of the camera. Might be a future podcast. Alan Edgar, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> we, we haven't got tickets because <laughs> we're the talent. We're going to be on one of the two panels. More details to come, but are you excited? I think it'll be a great night. Absolutely. I hope I'm in the first part so that I can then just get hammered through yeah. the second part we've and been, shout abuse. That's pretty much the plan. We've been talking about important things like the bowed drunkenness window. So bowed needs to be sober enough to help with the setup. <laughs> but drunk enough to be entertaining later on. He's Can already giving it? us the hurry yeah. up sign. Okay. Yeah. I will say all the tickets, uh, proceeds from this live show and all the other live show will we be having. We're probably going to do Admiral, then maybe Aura Moore, the Armadillo, Hydro. Hydro, yeah. Then we're going to her. We'll go to the Celtic Foundation. So all to a really good cause. The Lunch Club, where we are now. Uh, also a good cause. Uh, if you're watching the video, obviously, uh, well, you're watching the video. Uh, it will be up, uh, obviously, uh, later this afternoon. The podcast up at 6 p.m. every time. Just, um, I, it, you do have to excuse me if I lose eye contact because I have to kind of glance uh, on the agenda, which I was given eight minutes ago. Uh, yep. So I want to cover Celtic women. Uh, obviously, some of the students were at the Glasgow City uh, game uh, quarterfinal yep. uh, last weekend. Last uh, Hibernian versus Celtic on Sunday, Sunday Ainsley Park, 1 p.m. kickoff. I always like to shout out Andy. Andy was at the Hibs champion, Hibs Women's Champions League match last week. Yeah, had a great time. They went one 0 up after two minutes and lost four one. So not not a great result, um, but hopefully that's really got them down and Celtic will beat them. You guys have talked about this before on, on, on talking about Celtic women and podcast. It's pretty much the exact same time as the Celtic Kimarno game, which isn't oh, yeah. ideal. Uh, and hopefully something we can look to change in the future. Uh, I, I, there's going to be a lot more coverage of the Celtic uh, women f- football team coming up, so stay tuned for that as well. Yep. Deep breath, Alan Edgar. Um, Ren, one all. Good result, even better performance? Very good result, definitely. The performance was good compared to what we are used to in Europe away. And I think it could, be, it could potentially be the best team in the group as well or, or very nearly so start off with a point and if you win your next game at home against Cluj then we're in a great position so I think it's a great start absolutely Ian Dugan were you uh, what were you most happy with yesterday? I, I, I was genuinely so happy with with almost every aspect of the performance I thought you got the tactics spot on um, I, th- I thought the way that uh, you know we kind of handled Dren defended well with the exception of, of Ayer's sort of moment of madness but we, we'll get to that we'll get to but we genuinely we carried a threat and y- you know we talk about the Champions League sometimes this felt like a really good level like you're like you know you're playing a team 
it's a challenge, but actually you're like, do you know this is 50-50 as to whether we win it? So I think the most really pleasing satisfying game. The most pleasing thing for me, Alan Edgar, is I thought it wasn't a game that Celtic went and dominated, but as you said, I think it's the, the, probably the best team in the group. And what I liked about it is that they were very evenly matched. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a pairs of game where, where Ren you know, was trying to do certain things defensively. I think after they go, they kind of tried to sit back a bit. But whatever kind of Ren tried to do, Celtic kind of adjusted a bit. And, you know, if they had to play a bit on the break, they did that. If they had to play more possession build-up attacks, which they had to do after the goal, I think they kind of managed that as well. So, like, the in-game changes were, I thought, was really good. Well, what we talked about midweek about the Hamilton game was that when things weren't going our well, going away in that game, we weren't able just to maybe sit in and say, you know what, we'll play five, ten minutes as a flat four and try and get a bit more control back in the game. And that's exactly what we did last night. And you're doing that against a better side. So... I think we have to commend that and we have to commend that we're able to play different phases of the game. We don't have one plan that we're just going to stick to. We can actually adjust in the game and I think we might need to see that a lot this season because the quality of opposition that we play week on week varies quite significantly. Ian Dugan, when you go into a European game, you know, you expect tougher opponents. The one thing you maybe don't expect is worse referees than yes. the Scottish Premiership. What talk, talk, talk me to. Well, I've just, do you know? So he makes, so he gets the the the, the penalty wrong with with, with Christie. Yeah. The IR one spot on, like like I mean, it, it technically should have been two penalties, given how much of his jersey he had before he decided to to tackle him. But then, like the bio, the first one, I I think that is a yellow card. That's fine, but he's so influenced by the crowd. And the reaction of I've the never seen player. anything like that. And then, and then, so he goes through. He does not touch the the keeper in the head at all. He doesn't touch him at all. And he and he and he kind of gives himself a minute. Oh, look at that, that 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 walks over, looks at the keeper, and goes, "Oh, ah, yeah, you're right." I Card. Mean, I mean, Al, Al Edgar, between us, we've graced a lot of dodgy football pitches. We faced a lot of dodgy refereeing on on two countries. Have you ever seen any ref? Changed your mind in a way that referee did yesterday. On the on the on the. I've Bay never Austin. seen it at that level. Absolutely not. At amateur level, I've seen some <laughs> some some interesting things, um, but never at that level. I've seen a referee clearly signal that it's not a foul. So he's not only saying, yep. you know, it's not an advantage he's played. He said it's not a foul. If he you know puts his hands out like that, then he's saying advantage but he's not he's saying it's not a foul he lets play go on a bit he sees the goalkeeper's still down I don't have a problem with him stopping the game because the goalkeeper's down but to go over have a wee look and go ah he's holding his he's holding his, his head, head. Aye, look at I'm going to go and book him he's then he's I, then just got it completely did you wrong think he's, he's lost he, control he so we saw maybe it was just a wee spot maybe it shaved uh-huh. you know so so I think the root cause for this and and I have a good friend at UEFA who's sorting me out oh, for hello. tickets, right? So, is. so I'm not going to be too critical. Hi, hi, Nick, if you're watching. Um, however, is he a Patreon? You, he's not a Patreon, and he's not allowed to. He would love to come and talk to us, but he's not allowed to. Is he a Rangers fan? No, 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 Arsenal fan. Uh, he's from London. Rangers um, fan. So UEFA really want to make a go of the Europa League. They don't want uh, clubs turning up and devaluing it. And actually, I'd argue, you know. Clubs like Celtic, it should be a good tournament for us. Why are they then creating a two-tier system where you've got VAR in the Champions League, but not in the Europa League? It's just, it's devaluing it from the start. I mean, I'm against VAR anyway, as as a principle, but the way it's been implemented, (laughs) it's just completely laughable. And that's in the World Cup, the Women's World Cup, the way they're doing the Premiership, where they're kind of like, you know, we'll have VAR, but... We're not going to overrule any decision. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, in England, it's, it is an absolute so there's not mess. And then in one of the, you know, the second biggest European competition, go, nah, we're just not going to have it. What would VAR have changed last night, though? Uh, we'd have got. I don't think. I don't think. You don't think he got the Christie Christie penalty? penalty no. I think if the referee on the field thinks he's so gone over, it wouldn't have been sent off. So, <laughs> obviously, what we don't like is, is, is football coverage focusing on penalties. Having said that, Ian Dugan. You think Celtic should have had two penalties? I thought we should have had the second one. I see. I think Celtic should have the first one. I'm, I'm not, not sure the second sure. one. I'm I, not I did, so sure on the second one. I did hear. One. I was. I went. I went to Sainsbury's after oh, the game, oh, and I did oh. hear on BBC Scotland they were arguing that that the Christie one was. I've more heard some uh, noises to my right from uh, Mr. Edgar. Uh, here he goes. Edgar. 
Okay, half. Can, can you just take that bias, that gym bag bias off for a couple of seconds? It's, it's not even Forrest, it's the centre half. He, he hangs a leg out, what do you want the player to do? You know, if Forrest wouldn't have went down there, I'd have slated him. If he didn't go down, and I talked about this last night, see this idea, see if a defender hangs a leg out, you throw yourself at it and make sure that you make contact Take the with contact. It. And see if people then say after, oh, well, he initiated contact. So be it. That, that's just how the game's played. You know, you can sit yeah. and talk about the how the game should be and what we should be yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want I us mean, to win games I mean, and get I mean, points. How it shouldn't be played. Is Ed, Eddie's dive was a... That, that wasn't there's a great, no contact. There's no contact. No, 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 exactly. And so he was rightly no booked for that. I yeah, mean, yeah, this, yeah. this is a masterclass in bias punditry. From if He takes what could be a negative about James Forrest, he turns it into a positive. Where is the negative? Where would the negative be? There's no be? negative. <laughs> there is no negative. As I said, a masterclass. Uh, he's also got great hair Look, as well. I, I mentioned that. You know that I'm not one to defend Christopher Ayer. That is not something I, 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 I like to do. But... Uh, Ian Dugan, you know, I saw, I saw a lot of things afterwards on Twitter and, and different places saying that you, you shouldn't be able to use Christopher Ayer's age and relative inexperience as an excuse anymore when he does have, I mean, we saw him lapses like this. Yeah. Because he's, he's a first team member, he might be valued at 10, 20 million. So, you know, look... You can't excuse the age for that. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, when you look at the number of games he's played at that level, he had a bit of a stinker last night. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold did. on. Let me cut in there. He did. Oh, okay, okay. okay. You, you, you're sitting in this podcast you're set, you're doing set. this the whole time, <laughs> right? When Was there any point where Ayer didn't actually have someone's jersey? I thought he had a bad can, game. Can he you, made a bad decision. Can, can you hear that? Can you hear that? That's the sound of a thousand gnarly Italian centre-backs. He's groaning at you. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut him off, come to you. Alan Edgar, <laughs> I thought Christopher Yeager was <laughs> had a goal. good game other than a penalty. Tell me I'm right. I don't think he had a bad game other than a penalty, but you can't take out the one no, I'm, I'm not part saying. impacts the game. I'm just I taking like it out now. From my blind spot to Christian's <laughs> blind spot. And that's what it's all about. It's all about acknowledging blind spots. Other than Look, Brent, 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 Brent Rogers never. Brendan Rogers never. Uh, uh, on sorry, the, sorry, I, I, I always went to Ali Congan and ran Sorry, Alan. On, on, on the penalty, I don't have. Centre halves always have. You want to always know where the player is, and the way you do that is by holding shirts. Referee will never give a penalty if you just have him. Yeah. What you need to do is, is learn to realise, right, okay, I've got him here. I need to now let go of that. And that was the only thing last night. I felt as if he was. He was worried about getting rolled, so he held on too long. Yeah, Sutton called it quite well that, that essentially Ayer was almost holding on too early. Uh, and the moment that the striker feels that hand on him, he's like, here I go. Do you know what? All he has to do is try and break away, and then he gets the foul. Just before he gave the penalty away, there was one in the halfway line where he got away with it. Aye. And he, it was just too obvious. At, at the point where the player is aware of it, that's when you need to realise, right, I need to let go here. Yeah. Because then they'll just throw themselves down. But I always want my defenders to have a hold of a shirt because that's just what you do, that's that's accepted. So just know when to let go is the key. But other than that, he was fine, other than giving away the penalty. Anyway, no, uh, overall Ian Dugan, uh, we're going to have a look at Kamarnock and a look at Fissel. Yep. But I, I think just in, in, on the last thing in the Europa League, Cluj winning against Lazio. Yep. It's a completely wide open yeah. group now. I'm I'm now slightly worried about Cluj at home. I was going to say because you go like, oh, this is setting up now. That can deflate things. And that, but and that, but on the other side, if you can win that game, which is you look at it before, you know, all the games are playing. So, oh, that's the most winnable. If you can win that now, one. Woo! Well, I think yeah, Harry, Brady, Harry Brady was saying it last night that actually, if you look at our stats, it's actually our home form that's been quite poor in Europe. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, like if we can turn Celtic Park back into a fortress, if we can win our three home games in, in a group where Cluj have beaten Lazio in the first game, you'd say that takes us through. So the Cluj game is absolutely vital, as are our two other home games as well. Have Cluj angered Lazio now? Or have they? I don't think when the draw was made, there was any team that you looked at and thought, we're not going to get any points against any of them. You know, yeah. It's not like the Champions League, so... It doesn't surprise me that there's... And I think it, that won't be the first time. There'll be odd results here. I think we're better set up away from home than we are at home because yeah. I think there's less pressure. I think the crowd at Celtic Park, as much as it can be a bonus, and these Europa League nights, sometimes it's not great. And sometimes they wait for the players to excite them before they get going. Whereas 
it felt like you know a couple of years back it was actually you lifted the players so the onus has changed there a little bit so I think we might end up doing better away from home than we will at home no I agree I, I think it might be one of those groups where you kind of maybe lose points where you thought you get them but you can go to places like Rome uh, and, and into Romania as well and, and, and be, so no it's an yep. interesting Good. group speaking of Europeans um, let's have a look at Kilmarnock yes shall we yes. I mean Christopher Gallagher has tried to print out some Stats, sir. I'm just going. Well, can I talk about the horrendous slur that Angelo Alessio said about Celtic? He compared us to Juventus, and that is disgusting. That is we are not. The that's the fixtures. That's that's we are not cheating. We're not fascists, and uh, I, I think that's a horrendous slur. And I think you should take that back. And well, I think Greg Taylor needs to condemn. Or he's cancelled too. I was talking about. I was going to talk about HG, but yeah, um, maybe let's. Look at it. Let me start it this way in terms of Kilmarnock because there's been this narrative ever since they went out in the, um, the European Against quality. Connor's key. E yes. I mean, one of the better keys, yes. admittedly. But still, but st a, a still surprise. a part time team still from a surprise. Wales. Um, yeah. Kirk Worldford obviously came out and said, Who the fuck is this guy? He, we're, we're training shape. What is that? It's uh, a badge of honour, I think. <laughs> but, well, Kille is sixth in the table. Modern Fitbit had him in fourth place in the XG table, which we all know is the real quiz. The real table. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, Motherwell is, is the big surprise this season. Kilmarnock is, is very close to them in terms of their underlying performances. Alan Edgar, is this... You know, it's, to me, this is, looks like a team like Kilmarnock who, I'll give, you a little, I'll give another stat here, why I'm a little bit worried. Kilmarnock is the, this team in the league that has conceded the less proportion of, the smallest proportion of their chances from build-up play. Okay. So that tells me they're a team that are good, or organized, and <laughs> has a good shape. I uh, wonder where they got that from. And they, you know, when they're allowed to settle in and have their opponent in front of them, they're really good at defending. Now, Celtic is the second best team in the league in terms of how many chances they create from the same type of play. So th there'll be an interesting point there, whereas you have a team like Celtic who's really good at creating chances from build-up play and a team that's good at restricting them. How, how do you see the game going? I think what Kelly Luke is, and the, the numbers bear it out, is they are, they've kind of got the house in order. They lost the first two games, but then since then they've been unbeaten. So... And they've actually done well. What they've done is they've organised in the way Steve Clark did from across the back first, and then they'll move. The one thing they struggle to do is score goals, and I know we'll go into that. But they give up. Other than Celtic and Rangers, I think according to the modern football numbers, they give up the fewest, or they have the best xG conceded against. So third lowest xG conceded, and that's you know. So you're essentially outside of Celtic and Rangers. They're the best defensive side in the league. In terms of both creating chances and, and restricting them, they're, they're the fourth best in the league. So, so better than Aberdeen. Um, so, I mean, this is a side I, I think we need to take seriously. I mean, say that, Ian Dugan, who, how many players do you want to rest? Uh, how or many do players do I want to rest? Well, or do you arrest people, uh, players for us, Thistle instead? Uh, so, yeah, so Thistle absolutely is the time where we rest players. Um, Bolingoli, was that kind of groin strain or something uh, adductor muscle strain uh, yeah. so I think he carried it into the match as well which I thought yeah, was interesting so, so I, I think I, you know I think last week we talked about that, that Taylor probably you know if you could not give him his debut against his old team um, that would have been a better solution so I think Taylor comes in uh, I want Iron Julian to again get time together and as long as El Hamid's come through I think that has to be your back four and clearly Foster still starting as well we, we talked a lot on the, the analysis last week, Alan, about what Celtic need to do against these defences like Hamilton that sit deep. And the pension for, for, for the left-hand side as well. I can't really see any other type of game on, on, on Sunday other than Kilmarnock sitting deep yeah. uh, and, and trying to frustrate Celtic. Do you think... Is there any personnel changes you will make with, with that consideration in mind? You know, in, in terms of formation-wise or from the team that started uh, yesterday? I, I wouldn't change the shape. I wouldn't change the shape at all because 
this is a team that's set up. You know, it, it can be a 4-3-3 quite easily, what we've got. Um, and then when Kelly have the ball, if they do, then players will drop back in. They're a nice organised five across the middle. So uh, I'm quite content with that. I wouldn't tinker with that. I think I would maybe look at the number 10 position in terms of if we're going to have a team that are going to sit really deep, they're not going to have a lot of the ball. We probably don't need to go and press them the same way. It doesn't mean we don't press them. We make it really hard for them to keep the ball. But when we've got it, the number 10 role has got to be primarily to work with Eduard to make space for him, but also to you know, try and create and unlock defences. And I think Christie's done great, and we've been a huge fan of Ryan Christie's. I'm not sure that going forward, number 10 is his best position. And I think especially in games like this, when yeah. we're going to be ball-heavy, we're going to need to have a little bit of subtlety probably to unlock him. Would you be tempted by Incham instead? I think in Cham or Rogic, I mean, yeah. there's, there's both options there. I think in Cham's a lot closer, certainly, and he's done well. So uh, I think in Cham's not going to be happy with the minutes he's getting at all. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got a game on Wednesday night against Partick Thistle, but I think that's a game where you might have bigger changes. I well, think I th- tomorrow I think, will be maybe I think one or two. If you're trying to get Rogic minutes, like 90 minutes against, well, oh, sorry, I mean, uh, 60 minutes against uh, Partick Thistle, uh, it's perfect for Rogic if he's coming back. I, I think I'd be tempted to start in Cham. I thought Brown was sensational last night, last, yeah. by the way. I thought he was great. Again, I don't want to see him being three games in a week, so I would drop him and, at Thistle, but I think we need him. I, I, I was going to say about Brown, you know, the type of game we presume this will be, Brown coming off, you know, putting a proper shift in on Thursday. Is, this the, is that where the change would, you think would come in terms of... Because if, if, if you take Brown out... It gives, suddenly gives you a lot of different options. You can yeah, put McGregor yeah. back, or you can put Charmin, you can put Rodrigue in, you can play slightly differently. I guess in a game that's going to be physical and combative, is he not the player that you would yeah. want? My concern would be, and it's not to say that I think Ryan Christie would then drop deeper because yeah. he'll give you some more physicality. You've got Alan Power, Gary Dicker. Yeah. These are strong, strong players yeah. in the middle of the park. And come on, look, I don't think it'll be a case of Celtic of you know, 75, 80% possession. They're strong players, but they can retain the ball and they're confident passing it yeah. as well. So I think it's going to be a hard game. I, I would be making limited changes. Yeah, um, the, on, the on bit Sunday. that gives me confidence was when when Kelly were absolutely flying and came to Celtic Park last November and we yeah. beat them 5 0. Like, I think Kilmarnock at Rugby Park are a different proposition because of that horror show of a, yeah. of a surface. Actually, on a bigger pitch at Celtic Park, I think it suits us. Well, see, I mean, are you going on Sunday? No, I'm, I'm not going. Because no. I thought, I mean, this is a chance to see Stephen O'Donnell in the flesh. <laughs> so, well, 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 you can well, go well, and see El Hamid okay. and look at how good I, I, he is. I might actually be going. Because when you yeah. wrote him off for so, having a funny uh, name. Can I just say about El Hamid, my favourite thing about El Hamid is that it kind of looks like he should be playing the, the lead in the Errol Flynn movie. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, got, got, he's, it, got, he's got an old yeah, school look. He could yeah. actually be like a, a Errol Flynn body double. Yeah. Um, Alan Edgar, favourite 1920s uh, Hollywood actor. Yes. 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 Okay. From that to uh, <coughs> Bolingoli might be out. Yeah. We have Marcus McLeod at the press conference as we speak. Um, that's where he kind of lives these days. So he'll get the latest news on any you know entry updates. Um, that might come from the uh, press and, conference. And it's going to be at the end. I was just going to say All that. Right, I'm Christian, on the ball. Don't you worry. You only had. Eight minutes of preparation. I was just checking that you'd seen uh, that's the all director. I needed, the that's director. All I needed. We're calling the director. Would you play Greg Taylor over um, over Johnny Hayes? Yes, I would. Right. Um, and, and I'm impressed with Johnny Hayes. His contribution to Ibrox was incredible. What His a tackle last night. That what tackle a tackle. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But Greg Taylor's, I'm assuming, fit. He's ready to go. He's so, and he's a natural left back. Whether it's against his old team or not. If anything, I think that's an advantage, to be honest. So yeah. I would have him in from the start tomorrow. I, I think there's almost zero chance Bolingoli makes it based on what Neil Lennon said last night. So, you know, rest him, make sure he's, he's rested up and then see what Greg Taylor's made of. Ian Dugan, obviously, there's a game on Wednesday as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of keeping half an eye on that, is there any players, and, and I guess that's an... I mean, to, to be fair, I don't think, it, from from my memory, I don't think Lennon shifted that many players in from the last uh, league game, league cup game, sorry. Yeah. Uh, do you think he'll... Sorry? Caldo got the tin tack, that's right, aye, on Wednesday. Gone. Gone. I, so gone. the new manager, new, is that, is that, are we going to get a dead cat bounce? 
Kenny Miller said he's not going to take it. Oh, Lee Clark uh, says he's interested. Just, I mean, Come on, Christian, you're right keep that, up. Uh, no, I was going to say, because Kenny Miller, I think they took the game at the... They're taking the game at the weekend. Yeah. It's like, I, think, I think it's a committee. Obviously, with Kenny Miller, an uh, important member. Um, but do you... How many changes... Without going to the actual specific... How many changes do you do for the Fissile game? Because... Wholesale changes. But the Firmland game was... Yeah, expected the to be an easy one. The, the family game was a horror show yes. because of Cluj. Uh, yes. I, 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 I think it's an opportunity. I'd like to see Leo Connor play. I'd like to see Frimpong. I, I genuinely would. Like It's a game that we should be able to play players like that and blood them. And, and frankly, we're going to play 60, 65 games this season. McGregor can't play. You know, we, we just... And you know what? I'm not being funny. If we go out the League Cup, it's not a priority. It's not a priority. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> are you no just chance. giving up on the quadruple treble like that? I'm, Toss I'm, it in the bin. I'm saying I'd rather have a good run in Europe and do really well in the league. And if I had I to prioritize, sh- th- th- surely those still staying out and mutually yeah. exclusive. I, I, you can make changes. I yeah. probably wouldn't be looking at eight or nine, but I think four or five changes. Yeah. Rest the guys that need rest is absolutely fine. But obviously, see how people come through Sunday. I think the key is what you've got though is is it's not just. We're not making changes for the sake of it now. We've got Mikey Johnson, you know, we've yeah. got Roger, we've got Cham, we've got Bio, um, we've also I think got Greg I think Taylor. So in terms of where we've got with this injury situation at centre back, if O'Connor's as good as uh, the Man United fans have said he is, he should be getting time because we might conceivably need him. Do you know what I mean? The more yeah. time that we give him at points when, when it's natural to. I mean, it, it, obviously, we've had a couple of podcasts where Kieran Devlin was on, a little bit of an inside knowledge, uh, and he was saying that a, a player like um, Afolabi had essentially been promised first-team football in 2019. There's not many other games than the Partick Thistle at home in the League yeah. Cup where you see an obvious point for that. So, I don't know, I want to go, if, if you had to choose one player of all the new ones, maybe like in the Frimpo, O'Connell, Afolabi... Luca Connor, uh, who would you want to see? Uh, even do you want to see Dembele as well? I, th- I think it would be. I think in terms of who's going to figure, I think you're looking at right back potentially, and maybe Luca Connor because if Luca Connor can play in that six or eight role, yeah. I think that's maybe where we're a little short. So I think he would be the one in terms of position. I think Afalabi, you've got Bale and Griffith. So no Griffiths is out injured, so I wouldn't think he would figure too early. Mikey Johnson's knocking at the door and left midfield. So I think Dembele, if anything, would be on the right-hand side. So he said that, I'm not he sure. said kind of fitness issues, Dembele. Like they're yeah. saying he's not Absolutely. so... I, I don't know. I, here's, here's an interesting one. And the last thing on Fissel. Yes. And I think... Because they're 28 minutes in. <laughs> yes. And people have got Friday nights to be Look, for. I'm the host, man. Yeah. Would you choose... If you, if you rest El Hamid... Do you think, and what we do you do, and what you think Lennon do? Do you think he puts Bauer in, or do you put he puts Frimpong in? It depends how much, like, do you know how much time has Frimpong had with with training with the first team? Says this has an adequate amount of time. Um, I'd, I'd go, probably I'd, I'd probably go Bauer, but I'd like to I, see. Frimpong. Do you think I'd, Lennon? Do you think I'd Lennon go Frimpong? Goes? I think I'd go Frimpong just because I think his player. ceiling's higher. He's our player, and Bauer. I, you know, I'll, I'll just a bit of wrong throw in though. I'll just be an interesting priority from Lennon in terms of uh, yeah, I think if El Hamad is injured yesterday, he puts Bauer in. But it's just be interesting if if he gives an opportunity to give Frimpong minutes and say Bauer, look, I don't give, need to give you Fessel in the League Cup. You can have you know that your way if you need to. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep an eye out on it. Yeah. Right, Christian. Co- co- it's time to wrap up. Okay. Are you going to be my the homage? director yeah. is not looking furious, but he's going to if we go Coming over the next 40 seconds. this weekend. Reaction podcast yeah, yeah. on Sunday, obviously after the game with Alan Edgar, I presume. Any, any special guests for the reaction podcast on Sunday? From Alan's house. Be from the, the GC2 area. There you go. Monday, the agenda. Um... And uh, you know, I tell you what, on the agenda, Gal's going to tell you what's coming up after that. Yeah, because that's I, why it's called the agenda. I want to give a oh a biscuit tin, oh a biscuit tin on tier three. If you're not tier three yet, oh. you should be because you get to listen to Martin Friel uh, and Ian and Ian, other Ian, other Ian, Ian Martin on and talk finances. Uh, and I, but I talk about finances cracker. in a sexy I hear way. this episode as a cracker as well. 
Yeah. Explosive. Look, it's finance and football. Of course, it's a cracker. Right. I would give a shout out to Daniel McGowan, who was in Ren yesterday for us uh, at the press conferences. Uh, I had a, you know, obviously was on the reaction podcast as well. Don't worry, we didn't use your money to send him out there. We, didn't, we wouldn't spend that kind of money on him. We we'll spend it on us. We yeah. wouldn't spend it on him. Okay. So, but he did a, a great job out there. Yeah. And who knows? We, we might have more. I think people it'll be two notice out in a way. Two notice. Just remember, if you, I I'll, will tell to Dan. <laughs> I will tell Dan next time if he goes to European away again. Just remember that your seat isn't your seat. Yes. Okay. You, that's, you just, a, that's a reference. It's politics. the same thing in Question, the press. Can we do? Can same we do thing it? in the press box. You just sit down where you want. Right. Question. What's your prediction for the game? Oh, All predictions for the game. Oh, I well think it will be one nil. Kilmarnock. You know who's going to score? It's going to be Christopher fucking Ayer. That's right. Don't let you it said go. one nil Kilmarnock. Did I? Sorry. He did once play for Kilmarnock. I did not mean that. And Christopher Ayer owned all. This is unbelievable. Alan, what's your prediction? 1-0 Celtic. 2-0 <laughs> Celtic. Who's your goal I want scores? to go 2-0 Celtic I think as well. You hold your turn. Eddie grabs one and, and Cham gets the other. Now, we come to you. 2-0. Who's going to score? Uh, Christy and Bio. I don't know. I, I've just said Christy's okay, not great. playing. I don't know. I'm just making it up. Christian, He's it's been time to go. He's been Alan Edgar. I've been Christian Wolf. I think this is proved that I can do in eight minutes what Christopher Gallagher needs a week to prepare for. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll see you down the road.